Goedemorgen mensen. Oké, okay, today we're just going to do a little bit of spot spraying for weeds, post emergent control. Nothing fancy, but just done correctly. Let's have a look at what we've got and how we're going to deal with it. Okay, first things first. This is a hardy dog poop, but nothing to do with what we're doing today. These little light green, medium green, it's more like a light green colored weed. It looks like clover. It is in fact not clover, it's oxalis. We have spoken about this before. If you let these get out of control, they'll take over your yard very quickly. These little buggers produce a little yellow flower. So this is called yellow wood sorrel otherwise. And when the little flower has bloomed, it can hold as many as 50 seeds on it. So even if you did treatment, you're going to have this recurring factor. And even if the seed was somehow suppressed due to imperfect conditions for, or imperfect growing conditions, it would just come up again later on. It would just remain dormant beneath the, the surface over here and it will pop up again later on and surprise you. Okay, and then here in the backyard, I've got these little buggers. This is called Dichondra, otherwise known as Wonderlawn. South Africans seem to love this stuff and us lawn guys hate it. It's an absolute pain in the backside. But it does provide you with some green if you just can't figure out how to grow grass. So I'm going to get rid of this as well using the same stuff. Let's just go over a couple of top tips for weed control in general before we even get started. The first is, you can tell the grass is a little bit short here. This is not ideal. What you actually want is for the weed in particular to have grown a little while. A little while. So give it sort of three, four, five days, depending on the time of the year, for these weeds to actually get a little bit of size. Now, the catch is that then what happens is people will go and wait for their grass to be nice and long. And of course, the weed is big then as well, but it has also then seeded a million and one times. So that happy medium is that sort of three to five days. Because then the weed is big enough for you to have done what you need the herbicide to do. Um, and that the grass is not so long that it's obstructing and taking a lot of that herbicide as opposed to the weed. The next thing is that if you end up doing a blanket spray, so we're talking about spot spraying today, so the area itself needs to be clear. So you need to get out your rake or your leaf blower and clean all the debris off the surface before you try and put anything down. You don't want to waste herbicide on a dead leaf anyway. You then need to try and do this as early in the morning as possible and on a day with as little wind as possible. And then probably the most important one is not to do it when your grass is already under stress. Whatever stress that might be, too hot, too cold, too dry, whatever the case might be, uh, even if the herbicide is designed to be used for broadleaf weeds on your specific grass type, if it is under stress, you can still damage it quite heavily. And the objective with any form of weed control is to get the weeds sorted out with as little damage to your lawn or even as little discoloration, let's put it like that, you want to see little to no effect on your lawn and this is what we're after in this process. So always, no matter what herbicide you decide you want to use, whatever you pick up at the store, read the instructions pertaining to your specific grass type and pertaining to the weed type that you need to control. So for example, oxalis is actually in most cases quite difficult to control uh, from a poison perspective. So you most likely need a higher rate than what you would for some other broadleaf weeds. So you need to go and look for the little section where it says oxalis or yellow wood sorrel and you find there, okay, and even dichondra is quite a high uh, dosage that's required. You need to go find that high dosage and then use that. But then you need to be extra careful because of the high dosage. Simple, but can be a problem. Okay, so I think that's it for what you need to remember to do before you even decide to put down uh, any herbicides. So what we'll do now is just have a look at what I'm going to be putting down and I'll give you the, the dosages or the rates that the specific product is going to need uh, to be applied at for these specific weeds that I'm putting uh, the herbicide down for. Then we'll spray and then I'll tell you what to do afterwards. Okay, let's start with this pressure sprayer. I like to use, this is a, a, a really cheap little unit. There's nothing fancy about it. It's got an adjustable nozzle and it's a, a pressure sprayer that builds up quite a bit of pressure and you want high pressure sprayers, not just the regular like pump while you walk things, 
because the higher pressure means that you're most likely going to get a finer spray that is still putting out a good amount of volume from the nozzle. Yes, you can adjust the nozzle, but there is a factor to the pressure. Uh, there's a mixing factor, there's a spreadability factor, and, and, and. So try and get yourself one that can build up pressure and then hold that pressure upon exit at the nozzle for long periods of time so that you get a nice accurate spray and also so that you get a good mix as it's hitting that nozzle as well never mind you having mixed it in the actual container itself yeah these these pump and spray sprayers are not ideal for herbicides and pesticides and that kind of thing you want in particular herbicides you, you want a really really accurate result with herbicides you don't want to be like pump and spray because the pressure is changing the entire time that you're using it and the thing is leaking it's dripping where you maybe don't want it to be dripping um, and it can also leak from the actual pumping device that, uh, that forget what you call it, the pressure pump. Secondly, I'm using a surfactant. You don't have to use one, but I do find that they work wonders. I, you know, if you've watched my previous videos, you'll know that I always use super wet uh, for these types of things and others. I'm again going to use it, but you must remember, as I would have mentioned before, that super wet or any type of surfactant that you add to products like herbicides will improve the efficacy of the actual product itself. So today I'm using Super Lawn Weeder by Navarro. It is a combination of Dicamba and 2,4-D and MCPA. So this is going to tackle like 99.9% .9 of your broadleaf weeds for most warm season grasses. Uh, I think Buffalo, if I'm not mistaken, might be a little bit of a tricky one with this, but I have used it on LM before with success. In fact, it did nothing to the LM. I think the LM handled, handled it better than the Kukuyu did, but I don't recall if it was rated in the instructions. For you, read the instructions and know a little bit better. Now, the product goes down at 70 mils per 100 square meters for Oxalis and Dichondria and those types of uh, weeds. You can use a lesser rate for other weed types and all that you need to do to figure that out is open the leaflet and you've got even more specifics so for example weeds on greens and bowling rings and weeds on sports fields fairways parks and lawns this is now what we are going to 50 to 70 mils per 4 liters of water per 100 square meters of given area so if you're doing spot sprays you need to get like a rough idea of how much uh, or how large that area is before you even get started. And here you can see all the list of weeds that are tackled at 5 litres per hectare. And in the list at 7 litres per hectare is Oxalis. Okay, so then you can pick that up. I actually haven't even looked to see if Dichondra is in here. I just know that Dichondra does not die if it's too low that stuff is actually quite hectic to get, to get rid of you absolutely have to have something like super wet involved when getting rid of dark chondria wonderlawn i missed something important earlier when mixing practically any chemicals in your little pressure sprays and your spray tanks add let's say three quarters of the required water into the tank first then add the product then add the remaining water then last you add whatever wetting agent or surfactant that you would have added you add that last 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 don't even do it with that little top up of water at the end because you may cause foaming that ends up pluming back out the top of the container and remember with any pluming that might happen with herbicides in particular now you've messed poison somewhere in the ground and this could pertain to any other chemicals as well okay so i've already put my mix together it's in the tank it's mixed up it's ready to spray uh, ideally you should be wearing full PPE you don't want the stuff to blow back into your face definitely you don't want to get it onto your skin if you do wash off with cold water uh, and soap of course don't let the stuff sit on you for too long it is still poison let's get to it okay to get into the spraying pump up the sprayer make sure it's ready before you even get onto the lawn and then what I do is I do a bit of a pavement spray uh, aim for any weeds if you do have. I've just done a roundup session here a couple of weeks back so I don't have anything. But I'd just like to get this out. Just that first little bit. You can see a little bit of foam. This is now obviously from the super wet that's in there. And this is where you should have already 
adjusted the nozzle to be as fine spray as possible. I've already done mine, I'm not going to do it again now because I don't want to get my hands dirty. Uh, it's also another reason why I like these kinds of high pressure sprays because they don't drip after you've let go of the trigger uh, in most cases. So the better the sprayer, the easier it's going to make your life as well. Before you get to spraying, my suggestion is if you haven't used your sprayer before and you don't know what your sprayer does output wise, you must remember that depending on the pressure and how you've adjusted the nozzle, it will change. The ideal thing is to fill the tank up with water, pressurize it, set up the nozzle, you turn on your stopwatch, you push the trigger down, and you time how long it takes to deplete, let's say one liter of that tank, or the entire tank, depending on what you feel like doing for accuracy. That then tells you how much the tank is outputting in liters per minute, and you can then determine how fast you need to walk uh, or spray. So for example, I'm used to my spray tank. I know that that kind of movement is about the correct rate over this little itty bitty area. Over time, you'll then be able to learn what your specific pressure sprayer does when you walk at X rate. Just something that you gotta get used to. Okay, so I've built pressure in the tank. I now know where my weeds are. I wait for zero wind and then I do an even coverage of it and you go past where the weeds are. And remember you want this fine mist so that you really, really wet the entire area fully. You want the whole leaf to be covered. And the last top tip is when you see weeds that you really hate and you've become annoyed with them, definitely don't go and color in the area because you're gonna probably kill your grass or really damage it, like what I've just done. You can even spray the same weed groups in your flower beds just don't get it on your flowers okay then once you've done your actual sprays you need to do the following rinse your tank out somewhere safe you know away from your plants preferably straight down a drain you know that's also another level of pollution but empty your tank try and mix only what you need to actually use so that you have as little as possible going down a drain somewhere Rinse the tank out thoroughly afterwards. Make sure you flush the nozzle out as well repeatedly. It's at least three times that you need to do this. Ideally, you should be uh, purchasing a little bit of a tank cleaner. You keep that in your garage uh, or in your shed or whatever. And every time you've mixed up some sort of poison in your tanks, you clean out the tank thoroughly as well per the instructions of the tank cleaner. And then you need to keep this dry for at least three hours. So try not to do this on a day that you know that it's going to rain. Uh, don't let your pets and your kids play around these areas after you've sprayed. Ideally, you want to leave this alone for three days again before you mow it. You can water it post that three hour time frame. Some herbicides will give you a different instruction. For this, three hours at least needs to be on there. I sometimes leave it until I remember to water the grass again. Um, I'm busy with the hydrophobic area out front, out back. So I'll probably water maybe later on tonight, but definitely not now. Let it do its work for at least two to three hours, longer if you can. And then the very last trick is to hit the lawn with a high nitrogen fertilizer or a good nitrogen fertilizer, foliar spray if you've got, three days after you've applied it. That'll help boost the grass back out of its issue and the weeds will continue to die. Okay, so that's it. Hopefully in a few days, Front and back, I'm going to go do everything now, including the backyard and everywhere that I see Dichondra and Oxalis, all the other broadleaf seed to be tackled. Then I will just give them their little spot sprays and then clean my tank and carry on with life. <laughs> That's it. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe. Catch you on the next one. Cheers.